Which ones? You're demeaning. You're demeaning the whole nature I'm of the business. I'm actually in the smut business. I do. Uh, I just did last hoe on the left. <laughs> and that's the truth. I also did Friday the Thirteenth, the New Beginning. Uh, I'm a, I'm kind of a quality pornographer. Any, any movie that Sean or Wes does, he makes a joke of and makes a. Well, Mark's working on a film. He's, he's writing and directing. I am too. I'm about yeah, to I started a picture uh, in, I think, we started pre production in January with uh, a little action movie called Wrong Side of Towns that will, I, hopefully, I think, if all if everything goes well, be starring uh, a wrestler, Rob Van Dam. I don't know if you guys know who he is. He's a WWE wrestler. And somebody wants to make a movie with him, so. Yeah. And I'm a pre I'm a pre-production on a uh, on a film called Places for the Heart, which is a which is a two two character love story that takes place on the on the West Coast on Highway One, and we're uh, we're planning on filming sometime in February. Are you, so where are you doing movie House in the Middle of Nowhere? What m movie is that? I, I, I read about it in like a uh, no, House in the Middle of Nowhere. That was the road leads. No, 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 no. He's got. I, you know, I'm trying to recall that. You know, I'm having a senior moment here. Now, what? What? what, what, what the, Were you asked to do a, a, the house in the middle of nowhere? Yeah. I've heard I, I, you, you know something? I, I seem to remember. There's a bird that just whispered in my ear. There's this cunt called David DeFalco, who really is parading around as a man, and uh, that was the film. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't like the man. I'm sorry. I'm freaking don't like television him. here. Hey! What the hell's with you? By the way, Jeremy is uh, Jeremy's looking for another rich guy to marry. Yeah. You guys know any old movie stars that need a wife? I mean, she's a good wife. I have wife. a great Hollywood wife. One more question, Dave. How did uh, they use your music in Cabin Fever? How did that happen? Uh, he paid me. <laughs> he came to me and he paid me. You know, and, uh, um, and my kids actually, uh, uh, Bo and Jesse, uh, recorded the. Uh, you know, they 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 did a uh, a remake of, of uh, you know of the uh, of the theme song from from Last House, and I I thought they did an incredible job. It was really great. You know, and then they have a couple of their own. They're working on a CD of their own right now. It's like a work in progress. Jesse's somewhere around here. I don't think he's here, but he's uh, wandering around somewhere. Him and Frank are checking out banks. Yeah. Um, Too young and crowd. Yeah, that was that was. Kind of <laughs> I had a Western fan. <laughs> That's kind of an interesting thing because because uh, Eli is one of the hottest commodities now in in, in Hollywood and, and uh, Eli Roth, the guy that directed the um, Cabin Fever, and uh, they seem they seem to let it go to their heads. You know, kind of turn they turn left a little bit, and all of a sudden they start to believe their publicity. So. I'm watching this happen with him too, but it's okay. I think we killed them and they were never seen again. I heard that they were uh, very depressed. Sandra's a nun. Lucy, Has her a father owns, owns Hershey. So she's kind of retired. She probably lives on Park Avenue. She lives in this little chocolate house, you know. Uh, whoa, don't quit your day job, dude. <laughs> you are not going to make it as a stand-up dog. Uh, that was always the case. <laughs> Any other questions? You guys don't want to ask Marty anything? Come on. Marty's starving. Sorry, I'm doing uh, um, Excuse me. Um, Rambo 2 was like the last movie that Sylvester Stallone ever, ever made. The last good movie he ever made. Um, is he hard to get along with? Because, because um, I, I figured now that Schwarzenegger was in politics, he could team up again with James Cameron. I, I mean, you know, Schwarzenegger was all in, the, in, in all the good James Cameron movies. I mean, get, get him a career back, you know? We need Stallone, you know? We need, can, can he make another good movie with James Cameron? Slice 50. <laughs> No I'll tell you one thing about Schwarzenegger. He lives in my home. I live in Sun Valley, Idaho, and he took his pants off a couple of years ago and flashed me. And now he is the governor. I mean, Are you serious? Uh, yeah. Yes, he did. He grabbed me. He wouldn't let go of me. And so finally, I started hitting on him. And his kids are with him. And I said to him, "You," I said. If I called you on half of your shit, you'd put your tail between your legs and run home. And he said, oh, really? And he let go of me. And he, he unbuckled his pants and dropped them. 
right in front of the restaurant in Sun Valley. Because that's who he really right. is. I mean, he's just, it's, he's a funny guy. But it is true that he grabs, he's got a great sense of humor, and he really does grab women all the time. And now he's the guy. I did his first movie, Hercules in New York. And I'm telling you guys, I'm honest. The original Hercules in New York has Arnold's voice dubbed. Right. <laughs> And that's and, pretty sad. The other co-star is Arnold Stang. Probably when they decide that he's going to be president, they'll ask somebody to come in and dub all the speeches, too. <laughs> like a current president. Yeah, well, you know, they're going to have to, incidentally, in order for him to be president, they have to change the Constitution. Right. They'll do that. George will do it for him. <laughs> you guys all go out there and vote for George and then kiss your kids goodbye. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But you won't have to worry about anybody coming here on jihads. Any Arabs here, I apologize. Stop fucking blowing up things. We didn't do nothing to you. It's them, not us. Like Is this a political the Arab women. I have no idea. Like <laughs> lift up the veil and say, oh my God. Are there any other questions you. about Last House on the Left? <laughs> no. would, you, would, you, would you like to hear the story of Last House on the Left from a political point of view? Sure. No. <laughs> it was basically an anti an anti violence, violence film. film. It was peace and love, except it really was. It was anti violence. We, that, we this was this was a planned peace thing, but all the cast peace. and uh, we wanted to do. We wanted to snap the synapses. We wanted to go overboard to a degree that people would be so horrified by the amount of violence that they would walk out and say, "This cannot happen." And that See, re that really was. Go, go, on, finish. Before before Last House on the Left, if you if you look at uh, American film, before our picture, violence was portrayed uh, in two ways. It was, it was portrayed in films where there was a suspension of disbelief or a metaphysical component that allowed us all to accept what was happening because, well, it's just not real. It's, you know, it's a monster, it's a demon, it's something else. Or it was portrayed in, in the kind of John Wayne cowboy way where somebody would get shot and the guy would fall and, you know, you, you didn't see it. You saw the result from a distance in a long shot or... You know, people would get shot from close, and they would just make this this, this minor grimace, and that would be that. <laughs> but in in this picture, it was the first picture that didn't have a metaphysical component. It didn't ask you to suspend this. It broke the proceeding. It allowed the audience to come up close and personal with what you know a man's inhumanity to man really is. No, no, we were in me. That was man's inhumanity to women. <laughs> and well, women's man inhumanity in, in to women. the broader sense. Men are not broads. Women are broads. He's confused. He knows big words, but he's not that smart. You have and, me fooled. And the one thing that we did get from Hollywood was little Sandra's death. First he rapes her, and then he shoots her. She falls in that cesspool, floats face down, and she didn't die. She walked out. <laughs> they found her. Oh, you guys didn't see that. They cut it out. Oh, There's yeah. actually a scene where mom and dad find her and she's near still the alive. lake and she's still alive. Yeah. Right. She, she said actually, something. it's in one of the prints. Yeah. It is in one of the prints. Yeah. Um, and that, uh, there's an, that's another thing. Now, talk, you can go back to the directing thing, okay? Um, Wes, wa Wes wanted us to play that hard. And none of us would do it. We really put our foot down in that scene. We said no. We they're, they're, didn't they're, want to do the when they made them wet their pants. We, I, I, yeah. frankly, I wanted to leave, and oh, well, I geez. was told this movie, none of that stuff was going to be shot. And Even then we with get their there. Sensitivity. No, it was to tell you the truth, it was really humiliating and horrible <laughs> for all of us, for the women. It was. It was. Ooh, I liked it. Piss your pants. <laughs> <laughs> How many girls piss their pants? You, you still guys? like it? We don't. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, she didn't really do it. A lot of guys oh, say, no, would you like to have did. dinner? Fred she says, make really your pants. Oh, they gave her a bottle of water to squeeze or something. She did not really do it. So men, men don't know how women pee. 
We beat up. We write our names. If you go in a men's room at a bar, it is so disgusting. You go in the ladies' room, it's so beautiful. It's like, don't they actually pee? That's right. Check out the ones in this hotel. That's That's why. We're the, the reason by that. Actually, the first time I ever seen somebody pee was on the subway on 14th Street. It was a gag lady. And you know what? I'm actually ashamed to say I was only a kid. I was maybe, I don't know, 14 or something. And I was, had my books and I was walking. And she went up on the steps and she pulled up her dress. And she looked right at me and she peed and she started cackling. <laughs> you know what? I got a heart on. <laughs> And, I, and you think I said something bad. <laughs> There's no way to top that. I gotta any, 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 any the reason questions? that Marty hasn't said, said anything, I think, what, Marty, you're missing your, what are those, the Hor Hor Horton? No, uh, Hor I'm living in overwhelm. Hor yeah. Horlick Hor 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 <laughs> Hor Hor or whatever, whatever they were, you were popping in the, in the police no, department. No, I'm, just, I'm just endearing to Fred. One day I'll be able to do all to to this with Fred. We haven't talked to each other 30 years since this movie. <laughs> He and you still have a lot us. to say, right? No, the fact that I, I have twins, and, and when I first saw this movie, I think Orion distributed it years ago on video, and I was doing Cagney and Lacey at the time, and they gave me a copy of the movie, and I hadn't seen it in 15 years. And at that time, I just had newborn babies, and I was overwhelmed by this movie. It's like the thought of my, my children, your children growing ever up seen to be teenagers and finding characters like you all. <laughs> when I met Richard, I made him promise to never see this movie. We had an agreement, and then I found out I one day that he owned it. Because <laughs> he's yeah. a dirty old man, you didn't know that. <laughs> but I mean, you know, Wes Craven makes his terrific pictures now, and, and it just is a migration of, of what we do at the beginning of our careers, and, yeah. and, and just... We Transformation, were, you know, right. such a he moved up. The effect. Well, he doesn't return anybody's phone calls anymore. <laughs> he doesn't return your email. What's interesting is the effect. <laughs> return my the, two but pictures ago. But the effect that you guys, the effect of the film on you guys, is 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 temporary in the sense that you can walk away from it, and you don't have to you don't have to carry it with you. In many ways, and I say this for myself, I can't speak for anybody else, but in many ways, the effect on effect on me in this film was permanent. I mean, this is. Totally, as far as I'm concerned, a reprehensible character, and this is not me. I mean, yes, I'm loud, yes, I'm physical, and I played rugby, and I did all that kind of stuff. But I'm not. It's just it, I don't even I don't live anywhere close to the way this character lives. I don't even. But it, there was an there was an effect. There was a there was a trickle down effect. I actually hated this movie my entire We're saying, life. Wait, what I'm trying to say is, yes, I you have got never been cast. more ashamed in my entire life than I was about this movie. Somebody asked me for their money back at the premiere. It was wow. me. And I was walking. I <laughs> didn't even have enough money to take a cab home. Crazy. I was going to walk. And they demanded so their awful. money back from me. Jesus, why are people paying money to see this? 86th thing? Street Theater, Lexington Avenue Theater. Uh, uh, but then I, I have a question for everybody. We all complain about it as actors, and we all remember the quality of it being so horrific and all. I'm kind of curious why whoever's in the audience is a huge fan of the movie. <laughs> there might really not be any. Sure. There may not be any more. Is there other people who are huge have been huge fans of this movie over the years? It's a great conversation piece. <laughs> I'll tell you, I saw this when I was in fifth grade. I rented because I like that family you grow up. <laughs> and it traumatized me so much that I had I knew these usually don't affect me. I had nightmares about it until this year when I finally rented it again. And it wasn't quite as bad as I remember. But I had to respect it because it affected me so much for such a long time. But what is it about it that affected you guys? Let me, let me I'd like to know. Where what where, where did it hit the vein? It's disgusting. For me, it just I've been a hard fan for you know, I'm like thirty one years old, I've been a hard fan for like you know, 16 years, right. 17 years, and to me this movie just kind of really set the tone for everything else, and even though I saw it when it was, you know, it was already pretty old by the time I'd seen it, right. I see how it kind of set everything off, and I just kind of look to it as a classic, you know, mm -hmm. for the horror genre, and I just like it so much because, number one, they don't make too many movies like that anymore, and I don't know, I just... I just like violent movies, you know, I mean, that's it. And, but I also think that, like, your character, David, and the character you, you know, played in Hitchhike, 
at House of the Edge of the Park, I just feel like it's just like some of like the all-time greatest villains and just evil characters. And I just enjoy it. I don't know. To me, it's entertainment. Other people are discussing it. To me, it's why, why is Why is such an evil character? Why is such a psychopath so it's, it's enjoyable? That's what I... I that, because that's I'm really, not that person. Okay. And so that's why it, I like you know coming here. I enjoy you guys are great And it's, it's just very enjoyable. And, and, you know, you give like intense performances. So you don't have movies, to identify with it. And the characters saying. are just very memorable. And yeah. there's no one out there like that anymore. Thanks. So thank you for that. I think one of the things about it is like, I know how you say, you know, you're not that person, yeah. and you have to dis but you know what, I think for me, it, this is one of the only movies I've watched once, I own it, and I'll never, I probably will never yeah. watch it a second wow. time ever again. Okay. And it's probably <laughs> Good for you. Because, no, because it affected me so badly the first time, it's not because of the fact that um, the person is over the top, it's the fact that, you know what, there are people out there like this who do these kind of things. And it's like, it's oh, it's a cautionary thing. tale, for sure. And it's, Absolutely. That, I, think that, I think it might be the way it's either the way it's filmed or just that the way it was, the violence was just so in your face. Yes. The realism of it. it Do you know that the guy that, it, that, I don't mean to interrupt you, that, hold on to your thought, but the guy, you talked about the way it was filmed. The guy that filmed this, got Vic Hurwitz, was hit by a car, I think about a week, but no, about a year later in New York and died. He was the first person to use a, a, a steady cam. He invented his own steady cam. So what you see running through the woods there is all steady cam stuff 15 years before the steady cam was invented. Yeah, that was sad. I'm sorry, did you want to continue? I just think that maybe it's because of the fact that, um, probably for some of the work I've done in my life, like just knowing that there are people out there that, that, this, that think this way and uh -huh. act this way, I think that's what just said it, put it off for me. It was like, yeah, this is a movie, but you know what? If this could really happen, it has happened in something like this. Like, well, I've like seen the DVD, and the one, thing, the one thing that I really hated about the movie in the beginning was technically... It was awful. The film version was, the sound was bad, the mix was bad, the, the music was overpowering, the cuts were bad because, you know, the, the MPAA said to me, you can't have that, they just went. And then I found out, I've been reading that projectors, the guys in the projection room were ripping film up too. They were censoring parts that they didn't like. But now that I see the DVD, I do see the attraction. The, the bad guys especially and the violent scenes are real. They're almost like documentary is what they're like. Which was, was one of the things that the critics said that I, I found so offensive. This one guy said, I felt ashamed because I was rooting for the bad guys. And, and all I could think of was, we're acting, you moron! We're not really bad guys, we're actors! We'll take a couple more and then, and then we gotta go. Who said that? Back we're not talking, you! Well, you're yeah, just shutting up. One of my favorite scenes is the suicide scene between you two. Yeah. Uh, when you Blow your brains out. Suicide. Was that a one take deal? Well, no, because there's two shots. No, it was done. It was done in a couple of different parts. Okay. Uh, uh, if you remember how it goes, uh, the, the shot is on David, and then you hear the gunshot go off off camera. And then you go to him. Okay. And then you go to me, Slug and him. I'm you know, no, no, I'm I'm standing there holding the gun. And then you look and say, oh, what are you going to do, shoot me? Okay, and then it goes to me, and what you have is it, you have me responding to him. His voice is off camera, and it's, you know, then it's back on him, blow your brains up, blow your brains up, blow your, the gun goes off, and then it goes to a shot. So it's all done in pieces. And, you know, I, I don't recall how many takes each, each piece was, but in I don't think we, we didn't do a long because we not a lot because we had to take time because there was another there, there was a the shot prosthetic. yeah there's a, there there are, there's some footage that you guys that never ended up in the final cut and they had sewn a prosthetic uh, brain matter thing into the back of my head that took a very long time to do because it was about you know kind of like that and had perforations on its uh, uh, outer ring and they used my own hair to sew it into. And you know, we, we there were shots of me on the ground with that and it sliding down. And I had to bang my head up against the wall and explode a little blood pack. So it was done in pieces. Anybody else? One more. One more. Is it on Netflix.com? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah, everything is. I mean, you know, I mean, I would think. My bar mitzvah is on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Change don't carry it at all. Target!
get the oh, I've, I've, I've seen it in Blockbuster. I see it all over. You and then use it. Yeah. Hey, oh no, that was Cockbuster. Just finished up a uh, Q and A down here. In the, uh, <laughs> yeah, question, and, question and answer. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you all you. very much. Thank you all. Thanks for coming, guys. Film, he's writing and directing. I am too. Yeah, I started a picture uh, in, I think, we started pre production in January with uh, a little action movie called Wrong Side of Towns that will I hopefully, I think. All everything goes well. Be starring uh, a wrestler, Rob Van Dam. I don't know if you guys know who he is. He's a WWE wrestler, and somebody wants to make a movie with him. So, yeah. and I'm a pre I'm a pre-production on a uh, on a film called Places for the Heart, which is a which is a two two character love story that takes place on the on the West Coast on Highway One, and we're uh, we're planning on filming sometime in February. Are you, so where are you doing a movie house in the middle of nowhere? What m movie is that? I, it was, I, I read about it in like uh, well, that was a song. House in the Middle of Nowhere. That was the road leads. No, 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 no. He's got. I, you know, I'm trying to recall that. You know, I'm having a senior moment here. Now, what? What? what, what did, Were you asked to do something? Yeah. <laughs> you guys know any old movie stars? You know, I mean, she's a good. I have wife. a great Hollywood wife. <laughs> I One more question, Dave. How did uh, they use your music in Cabin Fever? How did that happen? Uh, he paid me. <laughs> he came to me and he paid me. You know, and, uh, um, and my kids actually, uh, uh, Bo and Jesse, uh, recorded the. Uh, you know, they 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 did a uh, a remake of, of uh, you know, the house in the middle of nowhere. I, I, you know something? I I seem to remember. There's a bird that just whispered in my ear. There's this cunt called David DeFalco, who really is parading around as a man. And uh, that was the film. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't like the man. I'm sorry. I'm freaking don't like television. Him. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> the hell's with you? <laughs> By the way, you Jeremy is. Uh, yeah, Jeremy's bad. looking for another rich guy to marry. Give us our work. Come on, Fred. Which ones? You're demeaning. You're demeaning the whole nature I'm of the business. I'm actually in the smut business. I do. Uh, I just did Last Ho on the left, <laughs> and that's the truth. I also did Friday the 13th, A New Beginning. Uh, I'm, a, I'm kind of a quality pornographer. Any, any movie that Sean or Wes does, he makes a joke of and makes a... Well, Mark's working on a...